I've seen the young men get up here and read or lead a song or pray. Or I remember trying to lead, well, they had us leading songs when I was a, a teenager. You know how, how your voice always changes when you're that age. And I got up one Wednesday night to lead singing, and uh, I started the song, and it was too low. We just bottomed out, so I started it again, and it was too high, and we peaked out. Finally, the song leader on the front row said, uh, you want me to start it? And I said, yes, I do. And uh, he started, and we made it through the song that time, but after services, as I was heading out to the car, in my mind, I was saying, I will never lead another song. I will never lead it. And the song leader came up and kind of pinched me on the shoulder and said, uh, don't give up. Well, I did for a while, but I came around. And uh, it's always good training, good time to be together. I'm going to back this up just a little bit. <clears throat> Jeff, I don't like having people to my back. <laughs> back in 1977, I was in my first year of teaching, and it was at Des Arc High School. From 1 to 2 o'clock every day, I had a study hall of 50 kids. I hope schools don't have study halls anymore. Boy, it was just, uh, it was kind of what I would consider a waste of time. Kids would come, and they'd just tinker, and they wouldn't really study. And, but they popped in music to that study hall to help sedate the kids, I think. And... Uh, one of the songs that came on almost every day, it seemed like, was a song by Leo Sayer, When I Need You. I didn't especially like the song. Uh, I don't even to this day. It's not a favorite song of mine, but I heard it so often, and I tied it to that experience that today, when I hear that, Usually on TV, when they're advertising the greatest hits of the 70s, they'll play that song. And when I hear that, I think of that study hall. I think of that big 240-pound tackle that I had in football that sat back in the corner and was just a pain. But I solved the problem. He came around. But I also remember one Tuesday as I was checking roll, and a young 15-year-old in the class had been absent a few days. And as I checked roll, one of the other girls in class said, she won't be back, she's pregnant. Well, you know, when I hear that song, I, I still see her face and her absence and why she was absent. And I still see Romy's lack of attention back in the corner. The song connects me to an experience I had in the past. Songs do that, don't they? We hear a song and we think of a person, we think of an experience, we think of some memory. Even in our worship time, how many times has the invitation song been sung and it was the invitation hymn that was led when you responded to Jesus Christ? And that brings back that memory. Or how many times do you hear a song in our service that ties you back to a, a funeral of a loved one? Songs tend to do that. Present songs we hear tend to move us emotionally, our feelings. We have joy. We have sadness. Maybe we hear a patriotic song and we feel pride. Words that are put to music is very powerful. In our worship services, we have songs led to help us focus in communion service, or maybe tie into a sermon topic, prayers. Songs are led and sung about the future. These are some of my favorites. Songs that deal with, or hymns that deal with our heavenly home that awaits us. The phrase, sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream. I love those songs when we sing them to just think about 
heaven. The following Sunday nights, uh, Casey and I got together and decided that uh, since Steve was going to be gone, that we would focus our Sunday evening time together on teaching and admonishing each other in song. There will be different formats each Sunday evening. Uh, I think Casey will give a talk next week as well as I'm doing tonight. But then we'll have some of our song leaders uh, be involved. We'll have some of our youth involved. With that being said, uh, I don't know the time element how it'll all play out each Sunday night. But if we happen to get through a little earlier than six, just fellowship or go home. But don't disrupt our younger classes that are being held uh, there in the back. And so let them continue through till six. What is your favorite hymn? Favorite hymn? Probably take you a little while to answer that question because there's so many that we like. I find that uh, when I think of favorite hymns that it has to do more with settings, where I am at a certain time or a certain theme, something that's going on, for instance, communion. When I survey the wondrous cross is a favorite of mine. Or I need thee every hour. Something to do with my need for Jesus. I love those kind of songs at communion. Matthew, last week you led the greatest commands. <laughs> so I put that down and then Scott led it this morning. When I hear that song, I love that song for the melody and the beauty and the, uh, sometimes I want to just sit and not sing and listen to the, the beauty of that song, don't you? I, sometimes I feel the hair come up on my neck as I listen to that and look around to our brothers and sisters and think, boy, we are so blessed with the love that we share for one another. I come to the garden alone the course and he walks with me and talks with me. That, that thought comes to me during the week oftentimes as I think of Jesus and his presence in my life. And I couldn't really tell you what my favorite heavenward, heavenly songs, songs dealing with heaven would be, but I could tell you right now in my life what it is. I'm able to go visit my mom every once in a while and she's 96. And when I sit across from mom and sing when we all get to heaven, her eyes are not as clear, her voice is very cracking. She's not in time, but to look at her sing when we all get to heaven, boy, that's a favorite of mine right now. Making memories, looking forward to. A few Sunday nights ago, excuse me, a few Sundays ago, I shared with you the song, Tell Me the Story of Jesus, a song in which we looked at the birth, life, and death of Jesus, and we realized that all of that was for me. He came to this earth, he lived, he died, he was resurrected for me. So, stay, let me weep while you whisper, love paid a ransom for me. That's a song that we ought to tie into every day, all of our lives. The verse we're using for the next few Sunday nights is this, from Colossians 3.16. Let the word of God richly dwell in you with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. You know, it's God's plan that we encourage each other in song. And what a powerful tool song is. I've often thought that uh, many funeral services that I've been a part of that um, I could have just had the songs and been uplifted by that life that we're there to remember. God is so good to us. A favorite song of mine and uh, Patrick, I mean Patrick, Scott, I'm going back in time. Casey, next week, Casey will, uh, share a favorite song of his, but I'm going to share one tonight. 
It's one that was led just a few minutes ago by Mitch. Father, we thank thee for the night. Such a simple song. It's not a majestic words or an, an exceptionally beautiful melody, but it's special to me because of its longevity in our family time together. My folks introduced this song to me when I was in elementary school. And we still sing it today. In fact, my dad, who's 93, his last request every time I visit him is, could we sing, Father, we thank you for the night? So it's been with us for 60 years. And uh, it's imprinted on my mind. But the thought in this song is, is uh, as my dad would say, it tends to bring the wholeness of life together. Thankfulness to God for his goodness and also a request to God to help me be the person I should be, to grow in love for others and him as well. The song that, I mean, the verses that the young men read from a while ago, Psalm 92, is actually a song, a poem, and it was a Sabbath song a song that people would sing on the Sabbath day together. If you noticed, it began by saying, it is good to praise the Lord and to make music to your name, O Most High. To give thanks for his goodness. As you think about this simple song, Father, we thank thee for the night and for the pleasant morning light. I'd ask you tonight, how much of our time is really spent in thanking God for his goodness? How often do we purposefully take time to thank God for his goodness? You know, this was a Sabbath song. A little bit of history on the Sabbath. We know that God set aside the Sabbath after he had created the world and everything good in it. But in Exodus 20, verse 9 through 12, we see this command given to the Israelite, the Hebrew people. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord for your God. In it you shall not do any work. You or your son or your daughter, your male or your female servant or your cattle or your sojourner who stays with you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. What do you think? Do we need a Sabbath rest? What do you think? Would that do us some good? You know, we don't have that command, but would that do us some good? some time to rest and thank God, Sabbath rest. It was there, God created it for a purpose, for a reason, so that they had put aside other things and think about him. We live in a very fast-paced life. Some people like to describe it as living in the fast lane. We live very hurried lives. I think this concept would do us good. To take time to simply rest and thank God for all of his goodness toward us. Take some downtime. Time for the specific purpose of thanking God. You know, there's another benefit of the downtime as well, and I think we all experience it. It's just not very often. Think when you have an opportunity to really rest your mind. What comes to mind? When you're not hurried, maybe you're on vacation and you're just sitting back enjoying the view somewhere and, and you're thinking, just restful thought, not concerned about what you have to get done on that given day. What comes to mind? I think people come to mind. 
we start thinking, you know, I haven't talked to so-and-so in a long, long time. I need to give them a call. I'm going to run by and see them. I hadn't seen them in a while. We maybe open our Bible and pray. One of my favorite places to go when I was uh, serving as dean over at Harding, which dealt with a lot of disciplinary things every day, that tends to boggle the mind. But one place I enjoyed going was I'd get my Bible, my blue jeans on, and I'd go up to Camp Dakota and go up on the bluff and just sit there and read and pray and think. Boy, was that a recharge. That was a blessing. We need those times. You know, I think that our hurried lives really decreases, decreases our ability to love people as we should. When we think of um, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind, love is not easily provoked or angered. Think of our hurried life and how, boy, when people interrupt our time, we become easily angered. We're not very patient. We're not very kind. I think in our hurried lives, it really decreases our ability to love people the way that we should. So the Sabbath rest. Father, we thank thee for the night and for the pleasant morning light. Help us to be those people we should be in the blessings that you've given us. I read this statement. I don't know the man. Kirk Jones is his name, but he wrote... Hurry is a desensitizer, snuffing out moments of, time, of intimacy with life to the point that we get used to living day after day with little deep feeling. Let me read that again. Hurry, that busyness. Hurry is a desensitizer, snuffing out moments of intimacy with life to the point that we get used to living day after day with little deep feeling. I think it all comes back to this idea that God had in the beginning. Set aside time to rest and be thankful. Focus on godliness. Perhaps we need to become less concerned with doing more and more concerned with being more. Of being who we ought to be. That phrase in the second part of that song simply says, help us to do the things we should. Be good. Be good. Be servants who love others and love God. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Paul talking to, excuse me, Peter talking to Cornelius said to Cornelius, speaking about Jesus, said, you know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit, with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. That little phrase in there, descrip describing Jesus, he says how he went about doing good. They went about doing good. I would say that any one of us, when we pass from this life and our bodies are buried in some cemetery and people pass by and if there's an inscription on your headstone, if it said, Mitch Walton, a man who went about doing good, that would be a huge compliment. That would be a statement of his life that he lived a good life, a focused life. We learn that from Jesus Christ, who was a man who went about doing good. Help us to do the things we should, to be to others kind and good. Simple phrase, but a lot is in it. And all we do in work or play to grow more loving every day is the way the song ends. To grow more loving every day. 
You know, in 1 Corinthians 13, when Paul wrote this chapter on love, <clears throat> we see statements or a question raised, first of all, that what if we sacrifice, make all kinds of sacrifices, and do not love, what are we profited? Paul would write in Romans 13 that we're to owe nothing to any person except to love that person. I think sometimes in life we can make life pretty complicated. We, we almost make a list, a checkoff list. Of do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, and it's wrapped up in a simple thought that do good to others or love others. Paul said, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. For this, and he lists some things, the do's and the don'ts, maybe the checklist we would say. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And if there is any other command, it is summed up in this saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. So, this simple song that I like so well <laughs> is really simple in thought, but profound in meaning. Take time to thank God and do good to others. Live a good life. Live a loving life. Love has its dues. Be patient, kind, delight in truth, protect, trust, hope, persevere. Those are the dues. Love also has the don'ts. Don't be proud or boastful. Don't be rude or self-seeking. Don't be easily angered. Help me to love others. Simple thought, isn't it? Simple thought. I would like for us to sing that song one more time here as I close my thoughts and then make one final comment. Father, we thank thee for the night and for the pleasant morning light. Even today, in the presence of my 93-year-old dad, that he would still say, let's sing that song before you leave. And we will. And then we'll have our prayer in closing. I'm glad my parents taught it to me. I hope it's a song that will mean a lot to you. But I also realize that it's true with songs. Some songs mean a lot to us because of the settings. And others don't connect as much with it. But anything that brings us closer to God and awareness of his goodness, a thankfulness for his blessings each day, and a request to him to help us be the people we ought to be is a good song. So, happy to share that with you tonight. We have an invitation hymn, focused song for our invitation. We sing one every time we gather for the purpose of encouraging you if you're here and, and uh, considering needs for prayers or being a part of Jesus' body through baptism, it's a time to encourage you. Again, with many things about songs, it's not the only time. It's just a time when perhaps you would think and consider about making your life what it ought to be in Christ Jesus.
we can help you this evening in that way, would you come as we stand and sing?